Hey everyone. Are you in the mood for finding some environmental puzzles? Because that's what I feel like doing. I feel like looking for a whole lot of them. And we have this entire island set out in front of us. Puzzles could be anywhere. Like, we know about that one right there. I'm not standing in the right place for it. It's like, right, like that. We know about that. That was the first one we found. And these, these lines, these circles and lines, they could be anywhere. Literally anywhere. So, I am just going to start rambling about this island. And probably there's just going to be a whole lot of cuts between rambles as I come across circles and lines because, man, I don't know how long this walkabout is going to be since, for the first time in this game, I really don't have any direction to go in. I don't have an objective, like to get to that laser, to get to that mountain that we were shooting lasers at. We completed that objective. It's done. So that means I'm just going to be slowly walking around this island, taking in the sights and looking for some lines, so I'm going to be starting that now. How did I never see that? That's like really obvious. It's just like a big old circle and line coming off the side of this mountain. I can't reach the bottom of it. I need to get further away. I guess that means we are going for a boat ride. All right, here we go. I see it. That's that thing's actually right above the end point right there. The elevator is right there. And I guess the only place only way you could have seen this that cave is uh if you went around here on the boat, which I guess I never did. So if I did, I probably would have noticed that big yellow circle up there. Going at the slowest speed right now, just to try to make sure that I don't miss it. Come to think of it, I never actually took the boat for a full circuit around the entire island. I did for a, a bit of it, like I think most of the island, but not the entire thing. Not the full thing. It's coming into view. I might be able to speed it up a little bit. Just a little bit. Alright, we're getting there. Maybe I want to slow it down as we start to get get there, but... Okay, I can grab it at this point. Is that a tunnel that comes out somewhere? Because I can't remember what that is. That's a room somewhere that has just like a tunnel at the end of it. It's not coming to me. But I do see that there is like a big smeary yellow line on the side of this mountain. Someone splashed just a whole bunch of yellow paint on the side of this mountain. And we're going to make a big line from it. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Continuing to move around. And more of the line shall reveal itself. We're starting to go around the greenhouse right now. And I think that, well, I've now found the line that I was searching for that ends on that greenhouse's elevator. Looks like that's how this is gonna go. Alright, so we're there now. The bottom of this. So where, the, where does this line continue? Because that's not the end of the line. It doesn't have, like, the little nub at the end of it. There's gonna be somewhere else that we could pull this down. Oh, okay, yeah. On the grass, sure. That's where we're pulling it down. And I guess we're gonna pull it back up here. Push it back up. Wonder what it would look like if you were inside the greenhouse and suddenly all around you are this this gigantic 
line that just starts sparking up. Well, it's not even one line. It's like parts of lines here and there. Wouldn't even look like a line to you from that perspective. Just sparks everywhere coming up all around you for some reason. All right. Almost at the end point. Give it to me. Give it to me. We're right there. I can see it. It's that elevator. We just need the right perspective, and we got it. Just get up. Up. Get up there. Just get up. Uh. Uh. Just... There we go. We did it. That is one big yellow line that we just drew on. Oh, hold on. Hold on a second. Uh, let's see. Where does that go? I'm going around this the starting castle right now. Uh, up, up and down this way? Or which way? Which way is it? Is it, um, hmm. Changing perspective, changing perspective. Where is this going to go? Where is this going to go? No. Okay. I'm going to have to, oh, there's like an end point right there. Hold on. We're turning this boat around. Almost had that. Not sure what I needed to do at the end right there, though. I'm gonna slow this down. I'm gonna take my time. You can see the reflection of the castle. I kind of always wonder if you can get a line. Does that also mean you can get the same line in the reflection? I guess I'll click on it and see what happens. Like, I did notice that it looked like that there were lines going around this castle, but I never n noticed a starting point to go from. Well, I guess I, guess I found one now. Let's see. We'll slow things down a little bit as we continue to boat our way around this castle. A relaxing boat ride. Searching for circles and lines. Not enough to just find one. You have to find both. Splish splash goes the water as we continue on our boat ride. Let's see. The circle was somewhere over the here, I think. I just kind of noticed it at the last second. Yeah, it's like... That right there, right? Can you get the, this one? Yeah, you can. Okay, it's actually two lines. Alright. Uh, let's see. Let's turn around. And let's take it just a bit slower. Gonna, nope. Gonna grab, nope. We turned around? Okay, gonna grab this. So I guess you have to do this twice. One for the real castle and the other for the reflection. So now that we're taking this a little slower, let's see if I can find the part that I missed. There was some break in the line and I didn't find where I was able to actually move it to the next part of the line. Like here I can see that I can move it. Once I get the right perspective I can move it here. Now I can move it along this line. Now what happens next? Where's the next connection? Well, it's almost there, assuming that I'm doing this right.
Yeah, come on. Just get, just get, let me get on that. Let me get on that line, girl. It's not, I can't get on the line. It's, it looks like I should be able to, doesn't it? I, yes, I do not know why I am not getting on the line. Like, I can see that there's the end of it right there. How would you actually reach that, though, do you think? Well, I mean, I guess if I get the right perspective, like, that's going to meet up there. That's what that, that looks like that's what's going to happen. But I'm not sure why I wasn't able to draw the line at that one breakpoint. It seems like that should have worked, but it did not. I'm just going to keep taking a look at this to see if that does go under that with the correct perspective. It's almost there. It's, it's, you know, it's not quite getting there, so I don't know. Like, this is going out of sight at this point, so... Hmm, I wonder if that was actually the way. That kind of looks like another endpoint as well. I mean, like, maybe... You could drag it like that. Hmm, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe one of those endpoints is for the reflection, right? Maybe it's for that. So that being the case, let's turn this thing around once again. Now this one kind of seems like a bit of an annoying one, having to do it multiple times. Because you might, well at least I messed up a couple times there as I was not sure how to bridge the gap. I still don't know how. I'm going to try the reflection this time. See how that works. All right, there's the circle. So, since I have that in view, let's slow it down, and then let's turn it around. I don't know why I turn the mouse as the boat is turning around, because I'm just turning with it. I don't actually need to use the mouse for anything there. Anyway, let's see. I want to grab the reflection of that circle. Yep, there it is. I guess I can move it along that. Doesn't barely looks like a line, but I guess it works. Let's see. Is it going to let me pull it over? Is it going to let me do it? Yep, there it is. And now I pull over here and like on the real line, I was able to do this as well. It's once I get to this next point that I'm unsure what I need to do. Can I pull it anywhere else? It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't seem like it's going up or down anywhere else here. So, if it doesn't let me do this, and it is still not letting me do it. Yeah. So that one... I am puzzled about S something I'm not quite getting because it looks like it should let me do it. It is not letting me do it. I'll have to think about that one. Hey, here's one that I saw early on in the playthrough but missed. Remember this one? Get that sun glare on it like that. And there we go. We're going at our slowest speed. We're going to drag this glare along the line. Drag it along the line just like that. Until... We got it that time. I wanted to get that one for a while now. Almost had it the first time, way back, early in the playthrough. But 
just missed it somehow that time, but got it now. Actually, something that I remember right now. There's a door along the shore here, isn't there? I never opened it, but there is a door here. Yeah, there it is. It's over there. You know, I'm looking for environmental puzzles right now, but a locked door is something that I cannot ignore. I think that we're going to have to head over there and see if we can open it. Should be able to open it, I hope, after doing all this. Hope I know how to open it. All right, here we are. So what we got? Well, we recognize everything that's on this. Tetris piece, Tetris piece, minus Tetris pieces, and a whole bunch of black hex dots. We need to get all of the black hex dots, except there are some minus squares here. So that is... Hmm, how do you suppose we want to do this? This one up here has to maintain its orientation. I can't just flip it around. So like, say... That would work for that, and I get all of the involved hex pieces. But then we have these minus pieces. I have to get them in the same zone as a Tetris piece. And that Tetris piece then has to be subtracted, has to have a piece subtracted due to the minus block that's here. This one can be oriented anywhere. I can make it long or tall, either way. Three pieces. So what do I want to do with this? Hey everyone. Uh, I took some time to write some notes down to try to figure out this puzzle on this door. And at the point that I'm recording this, it's roughly around three weeks since... My last little recording session, even though I guess in this video it's just going to cut from one to the next. I don't really remember what was going on, because things have been happening during, uh, between these two periods of time. But, it didn't actually take me three weeks to, to solve this puzzle. I did it the same night that I uh, stopped this, the last recording session. But I have not gotten back to the game for a while now. But now I am, and there are notes on the screen, and I think this must be how it's done. Because, hold on, so if I'm right about this, you need to trap this Tetris piece with four blocks with all four negative blocks to just cancel it out entirely so it doesn't actually exist in the puzzle anymore. Then, for the three-block shape here, I figured that you needed to get this at the end of the puzzle, when you are drawing the last line leading to the exit. So those were the two things that I was trying to work out how to do. I think I've got them now. I think the way you do it is you start here, go across the bottom, get those hex dots, go up here, then left and down, and then all the way to the left. And then up three, then here and down two. By doing this, I'm trapping that four block shape, the T-shape, with one of the negative blocks. Then I'm going to go up here, cross here, down here, left here, up here to get those hex, those hex dots. Up here to get the hex dot. All the way to the left, then up, then right, then right, then down. Then right, then up, then right, then down. And then down here. And by doing that, I have now trapped that T-shape with the four negative blocks. I have a vertical three-block shape. And all of the hex dots have been captured. So is that going to solve the puzzle? It did. It did solve the puzzle. And what's inside? Well, we've seen doors like this before. And boxes like this. Something down there? Kind of looks like maybe something's down there, but I can't see anything. Of course, you can't crouch in this game. Hmm, I wonder if you could actually see anything past this wall. Well, oh, back, back here? No, maybe not. Maybe not. What I do have in front of me that I should pay attention to is 
this box and if this is like the previous boxes that we've seen what's going to happen here is there's going to be a solution for a movie in the movie theater so we're going to open this up now yep yeah, that's what that looks like so hold on getting out my trusted pencil and my notebook i'm gonna draw this down we got these hex shapes as we have had before of course as we know the way it's been a while actually since we've done a movie puzzle but of course when we enter a movie solution the panel that we're on is made of these hexagons and we have to draw the line just right to watch the fun movie because they're all fun you know and I'm just going to draw this right here. I mean, in addition to these puzzles that we're doing, these environmental puzzles, it's also the case that we want to see all the movies. We want to experience all of Jonathan Blow's content all over us. Okay. So, it appears that we are done here. And I guess the next thing I'm going to do, probably going to go watch that movie, right? Because why not? That's what we got. We want to watch it and actually should actually check that there is one other thing I want to do before I go over to the movie theater and that is I want to go back down into the basement of the Sun Temple now there was a puzzle here that I, I was not able to get when I was solving this and I don't know if I want to take the time to try to figure that out right now because I still don't have any additional clues as to what it is you're supposed to do with that um, but the reason I do want to go down here, did I get those? Like, I'm pretty sure, pre hold on, I'm pretty sure previously I noticed something. Like, I noticed this. Did I get this? I did not get that. Okay. As I was walking around while this wasn't recording, I did notice that there was that thing in the reflection, and now I got it. It's like there's other orange lines, though. Let me, let me see if I can... Hold on. Can I get... Can I get in the right position? Oh, hold on. Maybe just maybe just about there. Not quite. Not quite. Hold on. Hold on. Is now? Now. All right. So there's only two full orange lines there, so I don't think there's anything else that I could do. Unless there was a way to get the perspective so that this circle could go with these lines, but I don't see... A, I don't think there's a way of doing that. I don't see how you would actually get that perspective, because you would need to crouch down, you know, and look up. And you can't do that in this game. But as I was saying... The reason I wanted to come in here actually wasn't for that. It was because when I completed the Sun Temple, I went up in an elevator. And it just occurred to me that I wanted to see if there was anything beneath the elevator, right? Because I didn't actually see what was down there since I was on the elevator. Now there's this. There's this puzzle. You know, I don't know if I just want to take the time to try to work out what this might be. Because, you know, if I... You think about how these puzzles go. It's all about trying to find the correct perspective so that the light is going to shine off of that thing and reveal the answer. And I just would have to figure out the proper place. Oh, hold on. Oh, that was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I can see part of the line. It's either starting or ending here, then goes around. Let's try starting from up starting from up here. Let's see if that's what it wants. All right, I guess it's is that solved? Did that do nothing? That doesn't seem like it did anything. I mean, that wouldn't be the first puzzle that we've encountered that did not actually do anything. But uh it made the sound that we hear when we solve a puzzle. But I don't think anything happened. Uh, at least at least I got that one, I guess. 
at least I know that I was actually able to solve that when I came back down here. Anything in the reflections? Here's the elevator shaft. <laughs> yep, there we go. Actually, I wanted to see what was here, because there was this door. I guess I can't open it from this side. I don't, I don't know where that's leading. But there turned out to be something else here entirely underneath the elevator. Let's grab this. Go down. Kaboom. There we go. All right. Doing okay. There were actually a few things to, uh, a few additional puzzles to solve down here under the Sun Temple. So I'm glad we came. I'm glad we came on our little trip as we're heading back to the movie theater to watch whatever the movie is that we just unlocked. And now let's head out of here. Out into the beautiful sunlight. Okay. We actually haven't unlocked that many movies, have we? Because it's, it's weird because it seems like I've been all over this island. And apparently there should be a few more of those secret rooms left that I've not seen. So I don't know where those could be. But as we continue to scour the island to solve these puzzles, I'm sure we'll come across it. And speaking of puzzles, something else that I noticed last time I was here, but I didn't take the time to solve it. It's like that right there. So what I was thinking was that if I'm on this elevator... And I can grab that, and then as it goes down, the line will will fill up, right? That seems like this has to be how it's done. Uh, all right, so how do I want to do it? Like, no, not like that. I have to get all the hex dots, right? Well, that's not... Oh, that's right. There's like a, a three-pronged shape in the middle there. I forgot about that. I can just do this, right? There it is. Right, we're going down. So I'm going to grab this. And as we go down, I'm assuming what's going to happen is the perspective is going to change so that this line will become a solid line. And then I can pull it all the way down to the bottom. And then we'll get that. We'll get that line. Yes, we will. Oh, no. That, <laughs> that rock face might block it. Uh-oh. That rock face is totally going to block it. Yeah, my cursor's getting pushed back. Oh, no. All right, I have to stand out by the edge. Of course, why wasn't I doing that already? Because as you know, I do live on the edge. Right, I have to stand right here. And I can't just grab the circle here because that does not make a circle. I have to go up for this to become a circle, and then down for this line to fill out, is how this goes. It's a slow elevator, so we, don't, we, do have to, we do have to be patient as we go up and down. Patience is key in the witness. Alright, so that should be enough. Stand here, and we're going to grab this. We're going to yank this down as we head down this elevator. Yep, it's coming down. It's coming, yeah, slowly, it's getting there. It's getting there, come on, come on, I'm dragging the mouse down, I'm dragging it down, I'm dragging it down. Slowly getting there. You can do it. You can do it. I believe in you, line. The line did it. I believed in the line, and the line believed in me. And together, we were able to solve the puzzle. Looks like it went to this column up here. And I believe, yeah, we're just continuing to walk in this direction so we want to head to the town there's the windmill and we're gonna head on in there and we're gonna watch us a movie i'm sure it'll be lots of fun of 
course, the movie theater is underground because that's where you get the best acoustics. The inhabitants of this island were very serious about their home theater. All right, here it is. Uh, so, yeah, we got three, and there are three remaining. So when I enter this one, I guess that means uh, there will only be two remaining. All right, so we're doing okay. We got more than half. Let's enter this. Enter this in. Starting... Oh, so I think mine has to be turned upside down. Because we have to start from this one right here. So we'll grab that. Pull it down. Up we go. And up. And when I press this, the movie will begin. And so, by a backhand and upside down argument, was predicted that there is in carbon a level at 7.82 million volts. And then experiments in the laboratory with carbon show indeed that there is. And therefore, the existence in the world of all these other elements is very closely related to the fact that there is this particular level in carbon. But the position of this particular level in carbon seems to us, after knowing the physical laws, to be a very complicated accident of 12 complicated particles interacting. So I used to illustrate by this example that an understanding of the physical laws doesn't give you an understanding in a, a sense of a understanding significance of the world in any way. The details of real experience are very far often from the fundamental laws. There are, in a way of speaking in the world, we have a way of discussing the world, which you could call, a, we discuss it at various hierarchies or levels. Now, I don't mean to be very precise, uh, this, there's a level, there's another level, and another level, but I will indicate by describing a set of ideas to you, just one after the other, what I mean by hierarchies of ideas. For example, at one end, we have the fundamental laws of physics. Then we invent other terms for concepts which are approximate, who have, we believe, the ultimate explanation in terms of the fundamental laws. For instance, heat. Heat is supposed to be the jiggling, and it's just a word for a, a hot thing, is just a word for a mass of atoms which are jiggling. For all that, fundamentally, we should think of the atoms jiggling. But for a while, if we're talking about heat, we sometimes forget about the atoms jiggling. Just like when we talk about the glacier, we don't always think of the hexagonal ice snowflakes which originally fell. Another example of the same thing is a salt crystal. Looked at fundamentally, it's a lot of protons, neutrons, and electrons. But we have this concept, salt crystal, which carries a whole pattern already of fundamental interactions or idea like pressure. Now, if we go higher up from this, in another level, we have properties of substances like refractive index, how light is bent when it goes through something, or surface tension, the fact that the water tends to pull itself together, is described by a number. I remind you that we have to go through several laws down to find out that it's the pull of the atoms and so on. But we still say surface tension, and don't worry when we're discussing surface tension of the inner workings always. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Go on, up in the hierarchy. With the water, we have the waves, and we have a thing like a storm. We have a word for storm, which represents an enormous mass of phenomena. Or sunspot, or star, which is an accumulation of things. And it's not worthwhile always to think of it way back. In fact, we can't, because the higher up we go, the, we have too many steps in between, each one of which is a little weak, and we haven't thought them all through yet. If we go up in this hierarchy of complexity, we get the things like frog, or nerve impulse, which you see is an enormously complicated thing in the physical world, involving an organization of matter in a very elaborate complexity. And then we go on, we come to things, words, and concepts like man and history or political expediency and so <laughs> forth, which is a series of concepts that we use to understand things at an ever higher level. And going on, we come to things like evil and beauty and hope. Now, which end is nearer to the ultimate creator or the ultimate? So if I make a religious metaphor, which end is nearer to God? Beauty and hope or the fundamental laws? 
I think that uh, the right way, of course, is to say that the whole structural interconnections of the thing uh, is the thing that we have to look at, and that the sequence of hierarchy, that all the sciences and all the efforts, not just the sciences, but all the efforts of intellectual kind, are to see the connections of the hierarchies is to connect beauty to history, is to connect history to man's psychology, the man's psychology to the working of the brain, the brain to the neural impulse, the neural impulse to the chemistry, and so forth, up and down, both ways. And today we cannot, and there's no use making believe we can, draw carefully a line all the way from one end of this thing to the other. In fact, we've just begun to see that there is this relative hierarchy. And so I don't think either end is nearer to God's. And it's to stand at either end and to walk out off the end of the pier only, hoping out in that direction is the complete understanding, is a mistake. And to stand with evil and beauty and hope, or to stand with the fundamental laws, hoping that way to get a deep understanding of the whole world with that aspect alone is a mistake. And it is not sensible either for the ones who specialize at one end and the ones who specialize at the other end to have such uh, disregard for each other. They don't, actually, but the people say they do. So. <laughs> but that actually the great mass of workers in between connecting one step to another are improving all the time our understanding of the world, both from working at the ends and working in the middle. And uh, in that way, we are gradually understanding this connection, this tremendous world of interconnecting hierarchies. If you expected science to give all the answers to the wonderful questions about what we are, where we're going, what the meaning of the universe is, and so on, then I think you could easily become disillusioned and then look for some mystic answer to these problems. How a scientist can take a mystic answer, I don't know, because the whole spirit is to understand, well, never mind that. Any, I don't understand that. But anyhow, uh, if you think of it, though, I, the way I think of what we're doing is we're exploring. We're trying to find out as much as we can about the world. People say to me, are you looking for the ultimate uh, laws of physics? No, I'm not. I'm just looking to find out more about the world. And if it turns out there is a simple ultimate law that explains everything, so be it. That would be very nice to discover. If it turns out it's like an onion with millions of layers and we're just sick and tired of looking at the layers, then that's the way it is. But whatever way it comes out, its nature is there and she's going to come out the way she is. And therefore, when we go to investigate it, we shouldn't pre-decide what it is we're trying to do except to find out more about it. If you say, but your problem is why do you find out more about it? If you thought that you were trying to find out more about it because you're going to get an answer to some deep philosophical question, you may be wrong. It may be that you can't get an answer to that particular question by finding out more about the character of nature. But I don't look at it. My, my interest in science is to simply find out about the world. And the more I find out, the better it is I like to find out. Uh, there are very remarkable mysteries about the fact that we're able to do so many more things than apparently animals can do, and other questions like that. But those are mysteries I want to investigate without knowing the answer to them. And so altogether, I can't believe the special stories that have been made up about our relationship to the universe at large, because they seem to be too simple, too, too, too connected, to, too local, too provincial. The earth, he came to the earth. One of the aspects of God came to the earth, mind you. And look at what's out there. How can he, it isn't in proportion. Anyway, it's no use arguing. I can't argue it. I'm just trying to tell you why the scientific views that I have do have some effect on my beliefs. It also, another thing, uh, has to do with the question of how do you find out if something's true? And if you have all these theories of, of the different religions, have all different theories about the thing, then you begin to wonder. Once you start doubting, just like you're supposed to doubt, you ask me if the science true. We say, no, no, we don't know what's true. We're trying to find out. Everything is possibly wrong. Start out understanding religion by saying everything is possibly wrong. Let us see. As soon as you do that, you start sliding down an edge, which is hard to recover from. And so when the, with the scientific view, or my father's view, that we should look to see what's true and what may, be, may not be true, once you start doubting, which I think is, to me is a very fundamental part of my 
soul is to doubt and to ask. And when you doubt and ask, it gets a little harder to believe. You see, one thing is I can live with doubt and uncertainty and not knowing. I think it's much more interesting to live not knowing than to have answers which might be wrong. I have approximate answers and possible beliefs and different degrees of certainty about different things, but I'm not absolutely sure of anything, and there are many things I don't know anything about, such as whether it means anything to ask why we're here and what the question might mean. I might think about it a little bit. If I can't figure it out, then I go to something else. But I don't have to know an answer. I don't, have to, I don't feel frightened by not knowing things by being lost in the mysterious universe without having any purpose, which is the way it really is, as far as I can tell, possibly. It doesn't frighten me. All right, so two separate videos put together in one, for whatever reason. Were those connected? The first one was all about... Le Inter was about accepting that everything is interconnected, all the hierarchies of thought and knowledge. Everything goes together. And the second one was about um, was about analyzing faith and religion the same way you might you might do with science. Um, so I don't know why those two were in the same video. Also, I'm not really sure in the recording. I'm not sure if if that screen will turn black. In the mid, at the end of the video there, because my monitor turned turned black, uh, turned off, because I guess I was standing still too long, and I had to shake the mouse a little bit to get it to turn back on, if you saw that. So I'm not sure how that's going to look in the recording. So we have four down and two to go. You know, something that I'm just kind of amazed I didn't notice earlier, kind of noticed it when I was walking in right now, is that there are lines around the theater... That's like half a circle right there. I've been to this theater a bunch of times. It's weird that I haven't noticed that until now. Uh, I don't know how those two could get, e could get matched up. Not sure how that would work. But that's definitely right here, the end of a line. That's the end of a line right there, too. Oh, uh, and there's like part of a circle in there. So where do you think the rest of that circle is? What would you have to do to bring it out? Because clearly it's not here right now. I don't see anything that matches up to that. I haven't really looked up here either, honestly. Like, that's the well in the middle of the town. That's that opening up there. I wonder if there's anything we can get by looking up. It's like peeled off panels here. I guess this is the back of the movie screen. Oh, what's that? That kind of... Looks like it's probably going to be a line. See that right there? It looks like it's has to be a line. Where would the circle to start it be? Hold on, let me just get a look in here. Not sure where the starting point would be here. You know, I guess one other possibility is that I could look down from the top of the well, right? That might be also a thing to try. Go to the well, look down, and see if the line becomes apparent then. I guess also something else to think about is that well, that opening, that's a big circle in itself. Could there be an accompanying line with that big circle? I don't know what would be. Hmm, things that I don't know. Oh, did I just miss this the whole time? It's not solved. Let me take a look at this. One line past the triangle. There we go. Interesting. 
Yeah, and this one I never solved. Uh, I don't really have to. Cause the door's open, but I mean... If I wanted to solve everything, like the idea was that we have these four black dots, we have three Tetris shapes, so I would have to figure out how I'm going to like put them all together. Um, like say, that would be two, the two bottom shapes combined. Uh, let's see. I wasn't able to do this the last time, so I'm guessing that maybe what I'm going to end up needing to do is just draw it out um, like I did with that door on the beach, right? Probably that's what I'm going to need to do. Uh, let's see. Oh, right. I kind of, it's coming back to me now why I couldn't get this. Like, doing this doesn't work because in the bottom right-hand corner, that line, the line underneath it, it's not, it's not shut, you know? It doesn't, I need to cut that off, like, right, cut that off, but that doesn't work. That's, I think that was the main reason why I wasn't able to get this. I didn't know what to do with that exactly. Um, so what could be done with this? Like, these are not diagonal shapes, so you can't change the orientation. So, and they're right in the corner. So, like, this one has to be these blocks. Couldn't move it anywhere else. Unless you got it in the same zone as, like, um... What do we want to say? If I did something like... Is that... Uh, hold on. Yeah, I still don't get... I'm still not getting the bottom of that. You know, that still doesn't help. Alright, so... You know, I think that instead of spending time on video... Pondering and meandering about this... I am just going to... I'm just going to do this on my notebook because previously in this series, I know I spent a good deal of time trying to work this out. and I was not able to work this out, so I'm not even going to bother with that. And I'm going to go back to my notebook, draw this out and see if I can get it. So I don't know if I'm going to get it yet, but if I do, I'm going to cut to that now. All right, I'm back with what I think is a solution to this puzzle. Uh, and also I'm back... I think this is around a week after my last session. Really should try to space these closer together instead of going days and weeks before I come back to it because I tend to forget what's been going on. But I have my notes in front of me and I have the notes on screen. And with this one, even though I was having trouble with it in the game, when I actually drew it out on paper, it became pretty, well, I think pretty obvious. I haven't actually solved it yet, so hopefully I'm right. Uh, but it looks like that the whole idea was that you had to put the, the four Tetris pieces in the same zone, and because of that, you could sort of transpose the shapes that they're making, so it's not like, it's not that this one in the lower left has to make that shape, but rather if you combine it with this one in the upper left, uh, that particular, sh the shape that go that is in the lower right, ends up being formed in the, sorry, in the lower left, ends up being formed in the upper left. So you put all four shapes together, uh, and it looks like that we can do it like this. Like that. And now the, the H, the letter H I have made, contains all four of those Tetris shapes in some place or another, and the black dots, they really had nothing to do with this puzzle. There we go. So, we have now completely opened the door. I'm very happy. Well, I'm happy about that because, you know, we're trying to uh, solve all the puzzles. What's that? It's like a, a, a light that's coming out of its metal enclosure. A little bit of detail, but it doesn't actually matter. Uh, where did this go again when we came back out? Yeah, it came out here. That's right. And I did solve the puzzle to open this door. There that was. And there was an orange triangle puzzle in there. And then this orange door opened, and I figured what I was going to need to do was use that orange door to finish this line right here. See the circle over there and the line as you go. But the problem is, is that when I was going around on the boat, 
It didn't actually make one continuous uh, line. Oh yeah, and this here's the orange plate that you can see through the circle when you're on the boat. But I figure that probably what we actually have to do is we have to, like we've done with some other puzzles, just move on the boat and eventually, and we click when the circle becomes apparent and we drag it across as the boat moves. So we actually have to be on the boat and has to be moving to do this. And hopefully that's correct. And I think that we'll head on our way to that boat now and see if it is. Yeah, there it is. It's coming on screen now, over there. What we're going to have to do is wait until that orange plate fills that circle completely. Then I suppose we can grab onto that. And as the boat keeps going round, I guess then we'll be able to drag the line as we go. Let's we'll see if this works. See if we're in the right position to make this happen. Starting to get there. It looks like that we are heading in the right direction. And I wonder if you can also do the same with this reflection down here. We'll try that after getting the actual circle in line. It's starting to fill. Starting to. Yeah, getting some sparks. Getting some sparks. Almost. It's just, just about there. It is just about there. Oh, there we go. Oh, are we going to hit that dock before we actually get the right perspective for the line, though? Wondering if that's going to happen. I wonder if we would have to go past the dock... Because I'm, I got the line, I'm holding it right here. The only question is, will we get the right perspective to get more orange in that line? So I can drag it across, because we're not getting it yet. We're not getting it yet, but as we move, maybe we will. Yep, okay. Went a little further. Went a little further, just need a bit more. Need a bit more. Come on, come on, orange door. There we go. I'm almost on the last section. I'm almost on that last section. Almost there. Almost... We're going to stop before we get there, aren't we? We're going to stop before... Yeah. Yeah. We've stopped. Yes, thank you for... Thank, thank you for uh, allowing me to disembark. But my voyage ended a little bit sooner than I needed to do. Needed for that to go on a little bit longer than that. Let's have another look at this. So, I wonder if I have if I have the boat going in the direction that it was and then maybe I like I have it I tell it to move on past this to the next stop. Like, maybe that's what we need to do. So, like, maybe what I need to do is go here. Let's turn this around. And I guess we'll speed it up. Speed up this process. I'll be back. Coming, coming back in a few seconds. All right. So, let's see. When can I grab it? Like, about there is where it needs to be. All right, let's slow this down. And now let's say, what if I wanted to, like, turn it around and go past the dock to the next stop? What if I wanted it to do that? Because it seemed like it was almost there. Don't want to click on that. Want to click on that. All right. And now we're going. And now we're going. And we're turning. And we're going to go right past. We're going to go right past the dock this time. 
And when we do, hopefully we get the right perspective to get more orange in this line to get right to that last section. Just get right to it. Yep, we're going past the dock. Now let me see that orange door through that hole. Let me see the door through the hole. I need that orange door. A little bit further. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. There it is. And while we're here... While we're here, I do need to see if that reflection is also clickable. Because it looks like exactly the same thing. And as we have seen... Um, the reflections of puzzles can be puzzles themselves. This one we already got. We got that one a long time ago. I mean, with that one, you have the actual tunnel and its reflection combined that make the one line. And there's the end of it over there. Alright, so we're going to go past again. Go past one more time. And we're going to see if I can click on the reflection because it seems like I should be able to maybe there's a reason and maybe the orange plate doesn't actually fill it up completely in the reflection that might be and if it doesn't then no, it kind of looks like it does can't click on it though all right let's turn it around and s whoops just to make sure Okay, let's go up here. Click on it just to make sure whether or not it is actually clickable. Or maybe it just doesn't count as a puzzle for some reason. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. You and I, together, we'll be finding out right now. Let me back off a little bit so I don't click on that. Click, try to click on that right there. It's not happening. Not even getting any sparks. I guess that doesn't count, which is surprising, considering how everything seems to count in this game. But that one, I guess, doesn't count. Oh well. Is there anything else we could be doing while we're on this boat? There is one I can think of, one puzzle that I saw not that long ago, but didn't actually do. Why don't we head towards that one? And it would be that wrecked ship up there. Yeah, there it is. You see it? Right there. So, we've seen this. We, w we went the other way on this. We started at the end and went to the start, but we did see that there was this green line going all the way around the ship. And that there was a circle on this side. I mean, it's not a circle anymore. Not from the perspective that we have. It's split into two. And like many of the lines that we've seen in these environmental puzzles, this is not going to be one single line, but rather a line that becomes a line as we travel around on the boat. Got it at half speed, just so, you know, hopefully hopefully we're not going too fast that I'm not able to complete the thing by the end, but we'll see. Can't seem to get it to go further than this right now, though, but there is more green line, hopefully as we go further. Yeah, there we go. Just have to wait, just have to be patient until the connection to the next bit of green line becomes available. I think it's... R yeah? Almost? All there we go. And we can see how these two are going to merge up right here. Right about... Here, let's get this over here, and we can see what's happening here. The next two, like that, and then, oh, across there. Almost didn't see that. Now I guess we have a few seconds before our perspective lines up for the next bit of green line. 
you can see where it's coming. It's just that it's going to take a little while before it gets here. But that's all right. We can wait. We are patient after all. And right there. And down and around. I believe that we are approaching the stern of the ship. And hopefully I'll recognize the end of the line when we get to it. Because there should be like, you know, a nub like there usually is when you get to the end of a line. It begins with a circle and ends with a nub. Like there's no nub right there. You can see it has a flat end. So, let's see. Where is the next bit of... Okay, the next bit of green line. Where is it going to show itself? It's going to show itself on the other side of this bit of metal right here. And we are going to move up. There we go. You can see the sparks coming off of it going to the next line, can't you? I didn't notice that. I didn't notice it doing that with any of the other lines so far, but maybe I just wasn't observant. It's doing it here, it seems. See, that does not look like the end of the line either. That does not look like a nub. Oh, and the entire line should start flashing white once I get to the end of it, too. So, again, hopefully I will recognize it. Okay, and around, and down, and up. Is that a nub? It doesn't really look like it from here. And the line isn't flashing white anyway. Well, I mean, I hear the dock, but we don't have time to look at the dock, because we need to look at this line. It has to end somewhere around here. There's not a whole lot of the ship left to go. Oh, that that's it right there. Yeah, we can see it. We can see that nub. Just have to find the way to get there. Almost. Almost there. Just a little bit more to go. Just gotta go down. Gotta go down. And then, before those two separate, gotta go down and across. And there's the nub. Everything's flashing white. And there we go. I wonder if that's the longest single line in the game. I can't... It's hard to imagine one being longer than that, considering the size of the ship and that line just wrapping around it. But at least we got it. I was kind of worried that I was kind of just going to screw up on clicking it at the very end there. Like I did with that sun, uh, that sun glare line a while, a while back, a ways back. But no, the click was successful. The puzzle was solved. And we have arrived at the treetops. However, I don't know if we'll do anything else for right now. I think for right now, that's probably enough for our return to Jonathan Blow's island of the witness i think that have been that's been probably enough puzzles for right now and there's really not much that i can do right now to sort of gauge my progress and gauge where i am aside from you know doing that and seeing it's 437 plus 66 solved of course that doesn't really mean a whole lot because what i'm just doing right now was wandering around and solving environmental puzzles, just seeing how many I could fill out on the black obelisks. And like I said uh, at the beginning of this video, even though when I actually said it was a number of weeks ago at this point, but what I said at the beginning of this video was I was just going to see how many of those puzzles I would be able to solve, how many of the lines on the black obelisks I would be able to light up, and how many of them I would be able to complete. And I don't know if I'll be able to do all of them, but I'll certainly give it a try. And once I get to the end of that, either solving all of them or just deciding that I can't find any more, once I get to that point, then I'm going to try to find the challenge 
the ultimate final puzzles puzzle or puzzles of the game and see if I can get that done. See if I can make it happen. But who knows when that will be? Who knows how long that will take? Because I do enjoy wandering around Jonathan Blow's Island. It's a nice, peaceful time, a nice, peaceful game. And it is a very pretty place to wander around looking for circles and lines. Who knew that looking for circles and lines could be so compelling? That's it for this time round with The Witness. And when we, when I, when we come back... We'll be looking for more environmental puzzles. You know, what else would we be doing? We'll still be looking for more of these. Hopefully we will find more of these and we'll try to figure out just how many of them maybe we have to go by maybe looking at those black obelisks and figuring out just how much more is there of Jonathan Blow's The Witness to go. I'll see you next time for that. <laughs>